first at four. The mysterious odor in Flat Rock continues to cause problems for residents. We'll have an update on the investigation. Plus, President Biden heads to the Gulf Coast to survey damage from Hurricane Ida. Rod. We are in the era of the help wanted sign. I hired a customer from right off the table one time. I got a server that used to work here to come back. And now this weekend, those unemployment benefits will go away. But will it change much of anything in this regard? We'll take a look. And welcome to Friday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Filtered sunshine and nice mild to warm conditions does it continue through Labor Day weekend. Your Labor Day forecast and your seven-day forecast minutes away. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, our big story. State investigators provide an update on that unusual odor causing problems in Flat Rock. Governor Whitmer issued a state of emergency for Wayne County. Local 4 has learned a chemical benzene was found in the storm drains. So far, seven homes and a charter school have been evacuated as crews work to locate the exact source of the odor. Officials say the mysterious hazardous materials pose a serious health and safety threat. Public safety is our main concern. If we think this is moving at all, we're going to notify those residents, we're going to notify those businesses, and we're going to continue to monitor till we find the source. And we are told the spill does not affect the city's drinking water. Air samples have been sent to the lab. This is an ongoing story. Local four defenders are following the investigation very closely. You'll see more tonight at five and six when you join us. Meantime, a woman is dead after police say she was attacked by a dog in Bloomfield Township. This happened Thursday evening at a home on Barry Drive near Square Lake Road. Investigators say the 91 year old woman was found unresponsive and seriously injured. She was rushed to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. Police say the dog is being held at a local animal shelter and are investigating the situation. A slight decrease in the state's newest coronavirus numbers. The state reporting 4,448 new cases in the last two days, an average of 2,224 cases a day. Sadly, we did lose 51 Michiganders during the same time period, 28 from a review of vital records. The state's seven-day positivity rate is at 9.44%. That is higher than last week. Now, on the vaccine front, 65.9% of people in the state have received at least one vaccine dose. The Biden administration is considering scaling back the COVID vaccine booster program that was slated to begin September 20th. Now, the core issue is the FDA reportedly doesn't have enough information for Moderna's shot. Moderna says it has started submitting data to the FDA on its booster dose of its vaccine. But adding to the confusion, Moderna's submissions are in support of a booster six months after a second dose. The federal recommendation for a booster of the Pfizer dose was set at eight months. So far, no information available about possible boosters for Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine. A settlement could be near to the end of the work stoppage at Oakland University. Faculty walked the picket lines yesterday over a contract dispute. Some classes were canceled. Oakland has proposed a pay increase to all faculty of 5.25% over three years. The union, however, did not accept the offer. Negotiations continue today. We'll be following it throughout the evening. Time now for our first look at the forecast. Andrew, we've got a big weekend ahead. Karen, and the weekend is looking good weather-wise. We've got sunshine returning as we go throughout the weekend, but there is the slight chance of rain. Now, for this afternoon, as we get the weekend started, things are looking excellent out there. Temperatures are a little bit below average, but hey, it's still mild to warm out there with temperatures in the upper 60s in some places, 69 cooler, cooler degrees for our friends over in Mount Clemens, but it's 71, nice and mild over in Pontiac, while it's 73 degrees in Ann Arbor. 74 at Metro Airport with mostly cloudy skies, but we're seeing a lot of sunshine still make it down to earth through that filtered sun. We're looking at a calm wind and dew points still in the 50s. Now there is some rain off to our west, but it's very dry out there. The temperature and dew point temperature far apart, indicating how dry it is. So this rain is going to slowly decay or erode as it gets closer to us. So dry conditions for all sorts of activities. Eastern Michigan has football layer this evening at seven o'clock over in Ypsilanti, 71 degrees by kickoff and cooler 60s during the game and by the final play. We'll talk more about Saturday, Sunday, Labor Day and that chance of rain coming up.
All right, thank you, Andrew. President Biden in Louisiana today to survey the damage left by Hurricane Ida. Meantime, the death toll grows from the widespread flooding in the Northeast. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom following this, and Kim, recovery from this storm really could take months. Yes, Karen, the president meeting with state and local leaders from communities impacted by this storm. Since the Category 4 hurricane plowed through the Gulf Coast over the weekend, there have been at least five confirmed deaths tied to the hurricane in Mississippi and Louisiana. More than 800,000 homes and businesses in Louisiana remain without power as of today. Officials say it could take weeks for just the power to be restored in some places. Within the hour, the president received a briefing today at St. John Parish's Emergency Operations Center. Later today, he's also scheduled to tour a neighborhood and survey the damage via an aerial tour. President Biden says the infrastructure destroyed by Ida needs to be built back in a more resilient way. We have to, it seems to me we can save a whole lot of money and a whole lot of pain, pain for our constituents if when we build back, we build it back in a, in a better way. And it, it will create, and I realize I'm selling as I'm talking too, but it'll create really significant good paying jobs. And Ida's damage didn't stop in the Gulf Coast and the Deep South. The storm pummeled the East Coast, triggering flash floods and tornadoes across the Northeast. There have been at least 48 deaths in Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Virginia caused by flooding. Biden pledged federal help for states dealing with natural disasters. He plans to further press Congress to pass his nearly $1 trillion infrastructure bill to improve roads and bridges, the electric grid and sewer systems as well. You'll hear more from the president tonight when you join us at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. Always appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. The new jobs report is out and job growth slowed abruptly last month. The U.S. added 200 35,000 jobs, missing economists' expectations. Now, it is the lowest number since January. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports the unemployment rate fell to 5.2 percent last month. Economists say August was marked by natural disasters and a dramatic surge in the coronavirus, weighing on consumer behavior and confidence. They expect any hiring slowdown to be brief. It is a milestone many across the state have not wanted to see arrive, while others say it is time to be done. The end of federal unemployment benefits granted during the pandemic. Many business owners have said they're anxious to get past the free government money so people would return to work. But as Local 4's Rob Maloney shows us tonight, that may not happen. Well, if there's anything we've learned over the last 18 months is that our economy has changed dramatically. And we know that federal dollars, the unemployment benefits in particular, have had an unusual impact because we've seen high rates of unemployment, and yet there have been lots and lots of jobs remaining open. The hope is that this will end when the benefits do this weekend. The flat top at Nana's Kitchen stays busy all day. Restaurants around the area have closed during COVID and they picked up more business year over year. Four or 500 pounds of potatoes a week. Yet owner Al Jedi says that he could use help at every position. It's been a long struggle. I wake up five in the morning and I have three text messages from workers at 4.15. Hey, I can't make it or my mom died or this or that. Like, you'd be shocked how many times someone's mother dies. You want to try to hash some separate? Manager Renee Casilla says she and Al often work open to close 13 or 14 days straight at a time. So she's taken to handing out job applications everywhere. I hired a customer from right off the table one time. I got a server that used to work here to come back. I brought her child in. I brought my own child in. W.E. Upton Institute for Employment Research senior economist Brad Hirschbein says there is already a bellwether to look at out there. If we thought that people were going to be rushing to look for jobs because they saw their benefits uh, about to expire, today's job release numbers uh, were not in accord with that. So at Nana's, they're not going to sweat the issue. Well, there's only up from here. Hey, regardless who's here or not, I'm going to open every single day and we're going to work every single day. That's it. Now, in some of the states that ended the benefits earlier this year, there was the expectation of an uptick, and it didn't come, mainly because many people are still wary of COVID itself and also the issue of child care. So we're going to have to wait and see here whether this changes much of anything. In Wyandotte, Rod Maloney, Local 4. 
Happening today, Soaring Eagle Arts Beats and Eats kicks off in downtown Royal Oak. The festival runs until Monday. You can enjoy food from 50 different restaurants and live music performances. One of the highlights will be the juried fine art show with artists from across the nation showcasing paintings, woodwork, and jewelry. You can find out more about the event on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Still to come here at 4, things are getting weird on social media. An animated superhero offers a harsh review of Kanye West's new album. We'll talk about that, plus a look at stories across America, including a fire that rips through several homes in Louisiana. How Ida made fighting this fire difficult for first responders. But first, new fallout over the controversial new law in Texas banning most abortions after six weeks.